Welcome back to Field Commander. If you were expecting this game to do anything about the problems the Advanced Wars community has with Navy maps in general, oh boy, am I happy to disappoint. This one was so funny, I forgot how funny it was. Let's get into it. Listen up, Commander. I'm afraid that your last mission wasn't as successful as we thought. A quick inventory and some satellite relay footage indicate that Scavenger was able to load several crates of high-class weaponry onto transports before you could secure the base. Huh, the man but lives up to his name, to apparently. Away ...during the firefight near the ports and are hightailing it out to deep sea. The ships have a good head start, but luckily we have naval units in the vicinity. For this mission, I'm giving you the option to use the Killing Depths Amphibious Assault Division. Primarily a rescue unit, there's... Hi, Drake! ...on the water should help you. I'm nah, sure it's not Drake. I'm the only kidding. Right they wouldn't. The Drake is too cool for this game. <laughs> deadlines. Be careful with your gear here, Commander, as this division is known for their tough defensive stances and will protect the transports for all they're worth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll see. You, you will going. see. This is. I forgot how crazy this map is. It's so hilariously broken, and I don't think it would be if it weren't for the ambush mechanics that I've already demonstrated. But let's check out our uh, divisions. So we have the most basic uh, Navy CO slash division ever. They trade their land skill for the sea skill, which as we all know is a great trade. Regular division power gives plus one movement. And the superpower gives plus two movement. Okie dokie. Ooh, and battleships even gain one range. And the other guy is... Andy again? Wait, I gotta look at this. Okay, so it's Andy with... Better defense? That's strange. Anyhow, let's get to it. Whirlpool here. So there's a dialogue, Do and we're shown the map, Looks like. and I'll explain all of this. So for this map, there are uh, transports, which are basically landers. They'll be trying to get to one of these two points, and if any of them make it there, then it's game over. Now, the sea in this game is really weird, because this is a reef, but it's kind of not a reef. Whatever. And this is a shoal, but you don't load and drop units onto them. That's what the beach is for. In fact, loading land units onto transports is really weird because the transport has to be touching the beach and the land unit has to step onto the beach in order to load onto the transport. So that makes transports um, just kind of a pain to use. But in this game, they also can resupply their fellow naval units, so that's something you want to keep them around for either way. And we have, uh, there's another unit type here called the Corvette. I don't know why it's called that, I'm pretty sure a Corvette is a kind of car, but my knowledge of ships has diminished somewhat, so I'll just demonstrate the ability that the ahem, Corvettes have. These are basically the cruisers from Advance Wars being able to fire at air units and submarines and each other for minor damage, but they can also lay out some sea mines, just like the mech units in this game. And isn't that beautiful? I could just spend all of my time laying down just a giant stream of landmines and the landers, the enemy landers would probably just run right through them and get damaged to death. But we're not going to do that, I guess. Even though I totally could. That would take forever. So let's check out the submarines of this game. As I stated, they can submerge, and this will allow them to swim under other u all under other units. Like, I'm going to... I can't do it with that submarine. I should have moved it first. Oops. Well, that's one mistake already. Oh yeah, they give you an airport here, I'm not really sure why. Let's see, the enemy units have, are mostly the same, but they also have a battleship. Battleships are pretty much what you'd expect, let me, let me take a closer look here. 
5 move, 2 to 6 range. So basically the same as an Advanced Wars battleship. I don't really know why they bother with the land and the sea parts of the... Yeah, 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 blockades, shoals, reefs, whatever. Terrain tutorials. So it probably looks like that the landers are probably going to get to the uh, escape point before I can get there. But it should be noted that these shoals actually slow down movement. They're like a forest, but they really hurt naval movement for some reason. Ah, oh, well. And I... Oh, that's a bad damage roll right there. That's really unfortunate. Anyhow, um, I just demonstrated that you can, in fact, build from an airport immediately after capturing it, because it's technically not occupied by an air unit. Anyhow, that was a, an extremely sp bad spot of luck there. I could have destroyed it in one shot, but it didn't work out that way, unfortunately. And of course, submerged submarines are in fact hidden from view. Like, unless you get, like, right next to them, just like in Fog of War. And this means that the enemies are going to suffer from the, uh... I'll just lay a mine there to stop an enemy if they try to get close. In fact, let's put another one there. It's no biggie. Those I don't need to move. Well, I guess... Well, we have an infinite amount of mines. I'll just ignore them. So this means that... If an enemy moves next to a submarine, then they will get ambushed. Just like, um... Just like in the Fog of War levels, where you would get ambushed if you so much as grazed one of the enemy units. See, it happened right there. Of course, now that submarine's vulnerable. And since submarines can go under enemy units, I'm pretty sure they can go under the mines too, but I guess I won't want to risk it. Uh, well, we're not gonna make it over there, I guess. Oh, oops, I hit my own mine. Struck my own mine there, that's unfortunate. But since the submarines didn't dive, I guess I might as well take advantage of it. And I should have fired at it with, uh... My Corvette. What a unit name. I will take out their battleship while I'm at it. So due to that bad damage roll, I kind of have to, uh... We're going to be delayed a little bit, but it's no big deal. This isn't really a hard mission, uh, simply because... Since submarines can go under the enemy units, it's really easy for them to, s to pick off each of those transporters. And my Corvettes are already doing uh, decent amounts of damage anyways. So I'll just make some more gunships. I guess I do have an excuse to lay out the mines here. Because there's nothing funnier than actually KOing something with a mine. Let's see if it happens. Oh, it's not going to happen this turn. The computer has not yet dived any of their submarines, which is very strange. Wait, what did you just... Oh, oh, that thing fired at me, okay. Ambush! Yeah, so now you can kind of see what I mean when I uh, say this is really easy because you can go under the enemy units. I think if it... well... I haven't really ambushed that many enemies this time around, unlike my with my previous attempts. Because, you know, I did run through this entire game one more time just to, just to remind myself of how crazy some of the stuff in this thing is. I suppose I will... Can I get onto the... No. So, only two transports left. What do you know? I 
and move on to the show here, so let's lay down some mines. Go ahead and join there. Can you load onto a cruiser? No, you can't. I don't know why you would. It was kind of a useless function even in Advance Wars to have the, um... Choppers loaded onto the cruisers. Like, who would ever do that? Alright, that's that. We're probably gonna lose a gunship, but it doesn't really matter to me. I guess they kind of want you to take a T-copter over to these two factories, but why would you do that? They're not good for anything. Land units really aren't go good for anything on this map. I'm surprised they don't give you a seaport to get some more from. And he used, and he used Hyper Repair, big deal. Gosh, if only this game had a... Like, I can confirm that none of the divisions rip off Sturm in any fashion, which I guess is a good thing. Actually, since my seal power is up, let's do it. It didn't even take out the entire bar, which is interesting, I suppose. Good, I can make it to that lander, and I think I've saved myself a turn, which is a really good thing. Ten supply depots a day, Commander. It won't stop us. Fine, I will then. Well done, Commander. That was quite a chase. Close call at the end there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, close World call at the end. <laughs> team are recovering the weapons right now, and we'll take them to a secure holding facility once we have an accurate count. As for Scavenger, well, as his body was never recovered from the wreckage, never of found the body, huh? That slime ball managed to escape again. Don't worry, Commander. He'll get hit in due time. Control out. Control out. Delete. What? Ah, my puns. Good news, Commander. Our intelligence. Oh, a non-navy map. All right the then. You've been seeing. They belong to a covert group named Shadow Nation. Shadow Nation. Ooh, led by Shadow the Hedgehog. Am I right? The Out the edge. Scene is alarming. The good news is that our spies followed units wearing their symbol to a remote base. Units, All please stop wearing the enemy symbol. You're just gonna get tracked. Center of operations. We must infiltrate the base to find out if Shadow Nation is alone or a puppet working for a greater organization. Your objective is to destroy all enemy units, or to capture the Shadow Nation HQ. Very infiltrate -y. Looks like we have the element of surprise, and the base appears undefended. <laughs> the only scrap of intel we came up with on those defending the base is the presence of an agent named Whisper. Oh, look at that face. information on him, or her, no one knows for sure. <laughs> I think it's safe to assume, however, that Whisper and the others you've fought are somehow connected to Shadow Nation. I recommend that you use the Hangman Division for the assault. Their fast capture infantry squadrons should allow you to... Hi, Sammy! Quickly. Unfortunately, they, they don't have Victory March, so they're completely inferior, unfortunately. But let's check them out anyways. Upgraded weapon I mean, that reduces their vision? Wait. This is a Fog of War map and you're sending me in with reduced vision? Fragile infantry can quickly capture buildings. Well, isn't that beautiful? Oh, this steel power lets any infantry place a mine. And the superpower explodes all of the mines. Okay, that's pretty intriguing. Let's see here. As for the enemy CO, it looks like they're just grit with uh, slow capturing. That's kind of interesting, but it looks like, uh, yep, pretty much grit. Which is going to be bad for this map, because I know what's coming. Wait a minute. All friendly indirect in fire units can move and fire this... T oh! Man, oh man. <laughs> well, let's hope they never get that off. So this map introduces us to a very, very 
interesting thing, which I, I, I guess they want me to demonstrate by moving this grunt over to that factory, because it's right there in range. Or not. Well, let's keep going. Because, you know, a thing that this game does is that whenever it introduces a new unit or something, that they've always got, like, a scripted event that kills off one of your units, just to... You'll see what I mean. It's not really the greatest idea in the world, because it, you know... There it is! They have snipers? I didn't see that coming. Really? You didn't see that coming, maybe because they're hidden, dude. The trap is sprung. Goodbye, Commander. This is the end for you and all of Atlas. <laughs> uh, sniper units. Okay, so this game has a stealth mechanic. They've introduced a sniper unit, and it can only fire their PSG ones if they are stealth, which they can go stealth, like a stealth fighter or a submarine, basically. The thing is, while they're in stealth, they can only move one space per turn, and of course they can't move and fire in the same turn. Commander, I'm Ghost. Yeah, yeah, you st And, um... Sir. If you reveal the sniper by moving next to it, yeah, you get ambushed by it. Like, like I think I can try and fish it out. There it is, actually. You can see now that it's been unstealth, which means it can't fire its ranged weapon. So, you know, it wasn't really that hard to counter the thing, actually. But still, that scripted KO wasn't really cool. And of course, they have other stuff waiting for us, too. Watch out for the Tetons, Commander. A Teton? A Teton? Well, it's better than a pipeline, I guess. It stops air units. Anyhow, let me fish out that sniper again so it can't fire at me. I think the stealth mechanics in this game are kind of interesting, but kind of abusable at the same time. Anyhow, the sooner we get that factory, the better. They've probably got other snipers out there, too. But yeah, this is our introduction to snipers. And there's one of them right now. And so now you see that it... So now you see how that works. There are other stealth units uh, later on in the game, too. There's a stealth tank. That's gonna be interesting. And they've got a stealth... Well... Well, I'll tell you right now that the jet fighter in this game is a stealth unit. Ready, sir. Like, just right out of the gate. So that's pretty cool. Oh, thanks, Mr. Uh, sniper Guy. But anyhow, the usual strategies of Fog of War... Uh, there's where the sniper was. The usual fog of war strategies apply here. This is just a really basic in, in uh, introduction to uh, stealth units. I'm losing a couple of guys, but it's no big deal. Because in just a moment. Time to start pumping out some of the big boys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are maps later on where the stealth mechanics get really, really annoying. But for now, they're okay. I want to fish out their stealth units, though. And I didn't, unfortunately, so... We might be losing that recon, which I just loaded loaded a um, infantry into. Yes, sir. Ready, sir. But I suppose scouting is what recons are for to begin with, so... Okay, there's one of them. You can actually see by the bullet graphic that comes out where the unit is, which is another cool thing. 
and there's another one, so... <laughs> but see, it's... It's a good thing that even if you're ambushed by them, at least you uh, took them out of their stealth mode so they can't fire. That's that's the neat thing about the stealth mechanic in this game. Still pretty powerful, though. Snipers cost 6,000, by the way. Anyhow, the HQ is right there, so I guess it's only a matter of... However many uh, shots I have to take. Of course, you better believe that I'm going to abuse stealth units. Now that we can get them ourselves. Well then, that's always a surprise. Yes, sir. Not a very pleasant one. You can see how the uh, ambush mechanics are getting really, really annoying. You know, that guy's dead. Like, did he just use his ability to move and fire in the same turn? Well, it's not going to be worth much since you can't really fire indirectly this round anyhow. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. Actually, no, it's no big deal. Anyhow, map over. That's stealth units for you. My objective wasn't to kill you, but simply to hold you here. That's what they all say. You Darth Vader knock off you. Don't worry about the sniper. Oh, hey. While we were busy with that... So I guess we'll see what's up with that next time. Oh, I remember this part. There's a really bad mission coming up. But stay tuned for that.